Dr. Blast and his group of researchers stand behind bulletproof viewing glass. They all have very serious looks on their face. That is until the first test begins. On one side of the test room, a Class D subject stands holding a sheet of paper. On the other side sits a bright red tomato on a wooden table. Dr. Blast pushes the intercom button and speaks into the microphone. All right, you may begin. D5041 nods and looks down at the sheet of paper in his hand. He begins to read. Is a hippopotamus a hippopotamus or really just a cool opotamus? Nothing happens. D5041 stands there awkwardly waiting. A man next to Dr. Blast in the observation room snickers. Dr. Blast jerks his head toward the researcher and stares him down. This is not a laughing matter, Blast says. The reprimanded researcher clears his throat and stands up straight. <clears throat> Sorry, sir. Dr. Blast leans over and pushes the microphone button again. Proceed to the next joke, D5041. The man on the other side of the glass nods and pulls a second sheet of paper out from behind the first. What's an archaeologist? Someone whose career is in ruins, says D5041. A moment after he finishes the joke, the ripe red tomato launches itself off the table and flies toward the face of D5041. The tomato is clocked at moving 104 miles per hour. D5041 has no time to move before the tomato slams into his nose, instantly breaking it. The men in the observation room behind the bulletproof glass do their best to hold back their laughter. Dr. Blast grumbles as he jots down notes on his clipboard. It appears that SCP-504 has a certain taste in jokes, he says to the rest of the researchers in the room. This elicits a slight chuckle. This might indicate sapience. I hope not. Clear the room and bring in the next subject. Medical personnel and a team of custodial staff enter the room. The physicians tend to D5041's nose and carry him out. The custodians clean the remnants of the tomato off the floor, walls, and ceiling. They exit, leaving the room completely empty. A moment later, the door opens and another ordinary-looking tomato is brought in and placed on the desk. The SCP agent who brought in the tomato leaves. D5042 enters the room a moment later with a sheet of paper in his hand. He stands on the far side of the room away from the SCP-504 tomato sitting on the table. He nervously brings the paper close to his face to read what's on it. Three tomatoes are walking down the street, D-5042 says with a little shake in his voice. He had seen D-5041 exit the room just before he entered, with blood and tomato paste running down his face. A papa tomato, a mama tomato, and a little baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind. Papa tomato gets very angry, goes over to the baby tomato and smushes him, and says, catch up. The new SCP-504 tomato immediately goes flying from the table straight toward the joke teller. This time, the tomato is clocked at 264 miles per hour when it slams into the face of D-5042. The impact immediately renders him unconscious. After the first few trials, Dr. Blast decides that it's time to take things up a notch. The Foundation has collected hundreds of SCP-504 tomatoes, so there is no shortage. After the room is cleaned once again, a medical team removes the unconscious Class D personnel who was knocked out by the previous SCP-504 experiment, and they're ready to begin again. This time, there will be terrible consequences for their actions. D-5043 enters the room. The SCP-504 tomato has already been placed on the table. You may begin, Dr. Blast says into the microphone. The Class D personnel reads the joke on the sheet of paper he's holding. So I was going to bed and my brother told me, Good night, don't let the bed bugs stick their proboscis in your skin and suck your blood. D5043 pauses for a beat. Good luck on a healthy dermis, he ends the joke. For two seconds, there's no reaction from SCP-504. Dr. Blast thinks this terrible joke just wasn't one that SCP-504 could understand. Suddenly, there's a loud crack. D5043 falls to the floor. Tomato covers where his face once was. When Dr. Blast and the other researchers go back and slow down the video, they witness the SCP-504 tomato traveling so quickly that it broke the sound barrier. The tomato impacted the joke teller at an unfathomable speed, instantly killing him. Dr. Blast decides that he needs to be more careful when choosing jokes for the safety of everyone involved. Perhaps a crossbreed between SCP-504 and regular tomatoes will yield different results. After the unfortunate death of D-5043, the research team waits a few days before experimenting with new strains of SCP-504. Three different crossbreeds are brought into the room and placed equidistant from each other on the table. D-5044 enters the room. Dr. Blast presses the intercom button and orders him to begin. If you have dentures, don't use artificial sweetener because you'll get a fake cavity, says D-5044. The moment the joke ends, all three tomatoes launch toward him at 145 miles per hour. They hit him square in the face, two teeth are dislodged, and the test subject is covered in the remains of the three squashed tomatoes. 
Interesting. Notes Dr. Blast. All the tomatoes reacted in the same way. So now we know multiple instances of SCP-504 will go after the same joke maker. He pauses to think for a moment. What if we cut up the tomatoes? The test room is reset. Another SCP-504 tomato is brought in and cut up into quarters. D-504-5 enters the room and begins his joke. I tried to walk into a target, but I missed. All four pieces of the tomato speed toward D-5045's face. They slam into him at 212 miles per hour. One of the pieces of tomatoes impales itself into his eye, instantly destroying it. The medical team rushes in and removes the howling subject from the room. Dr. Blast writes vigorously on his clipboard. We're starting to go through test subjects too quickly, he announces. Let's try a recording and see if SCP-504 will react to that. The research team brings in a new tomato, a CD player, and the Harmful If Swallowed album by Dane Cook. The CD begins to play. During one of the jokes, the tomato launches itself off the table and slams into the CD player, causing both the stereo and the tomato to shatter into several pieces. The tomato was clocked at 167 miles per hour. It would appear that SCP-504 reacts to the recordings as well. We didn't even have to deal with the damn Class Ds in the first place, says Dr. Blast. He informs his team that since the risk level is now relatively low, they can continue the experiments without him. He leaves the observation room to get some rest. The other researchers look at one another, mischievous smiles crossing their faces as they begin to laugh. The SCP-504 research team sets up three new tomatoes and brings three Class D subjects into the room. The researchers then retreat back into the observation area and begin a joke over the intercom system while the Class D personnel wait patiently in the room with the SCP-504 tomatoes. The following news item has just been released, said one of the researchers over the intercom. Bomb blows hole in Lennon statue. The first test subject finishes the joke with the ending written on his sheet of paper. Ooh, that's gonna leave a marks. Test subject one says, the first tomato twitches but does not leave its location on the table. The second test subject reads from his paper, BBC is just stalling the good news. The second tomato leaves the table at 152 miles per hour and slams into the jaw of the second test subject, causing a hairline fracture and a chipped tooth. The third test subject looks at the ending to the joke on his paper and begins to shake nervously. He speaks two words which he knows will not end well for him. That blows. The third SCP-504 tomato flies off the table, slams into the third test subject's head, and instantly knocks him out. The test subject is sent to the hospital with a massive skull fracture. The next day, Dr. Blast bursts into the observation room and reprimands the research team. I thought we just established that recordings work in place of live subjects, screams Dr. Blast. I know how much you guys hate Class Ds, especially D-50412, but the poor guy might not ever recover before his termination rolls around. I'm making it clear right now that whoever oversaw this round of testing is getting serious reprimand. The same goes for whoever leaked its video logs to the staff. Everyone is silent. From somewhere within the group of researchers, there's a snicker. Then they all break out in laughter. After this incident, no Class Ds or other personnel are used in research being conducted on SCP-504. The research team wheels in a television playing the Sarah Palin and Hillary Clinton SNL skit. The tomato shows signs of confusion as it flies off the table. Its trajectory includes three separate bursts of speed over 200 miles per hour, two stretches of motion at normal throwing speed, and one unprecedented instance of the tomato moving backwards. This all occurs during the flight of a single SCP-504 tomato during the SNL skit. The working hypothesis is that the tomato was unsure whether to take the video seriously or not. The research team later finds out that SCP-504 really hates science and mathematics jokes when they bring in a laptop that plays a pre-recorded engineering joke. Over the speakers, a mechanical voice can be heard saying, 2009 is going to be a complex year. We already know the real part. We still have to find the imaginary part. At the conclusion of the joke, there's a supersonic blast and the computer is completely vaporized by the tomato's kinetic energy. The sensors recorded an approximate speed of 2,174 miles per hour as the tomato flew across the room. The conclusion of the experiments on SCP-504 end with another computer being brought into the test room. The computers begin to play the Monty Python sketch of the funniest joke in the world. Toward the end of the skit, the Allied forces are reciting the funniest joke in the world in German to defeat the Nazis. The actors chant, when is das Nunstruck get und Slotermeyer? Ja, Bier Hund das Oder, die Flipper volt gersput. At the end of the joke, the tomato explodes on the table where it once sat. Debris from the tomato coats the entire room, including the computer. The researchers conclude that SCP-504 did not know what to do with the funniest joke in the world, so it self-terminated. Dr. Blass sits in the cafeteria quietly eating his lunch, reading over the logs for the SCP-504 experiments. Suddenly, a commotion breaks out in the kitchen. 
There are screams of terror. Dr. Blast jumps out of his seat, runs to the kitchen door and pushes it open. To his surprise, he sees slices of tomatoes flying around the room. Someone on the research team thought it'd be funny to give the unknowing kitchen staff SCP-504 tomatoes to see what would happen. After they had been cut up and put into food for the day, someone in the kitchen told a bad joke, and the tomato slices flew around like shurikens. Dr. Blast sees a group of researchers peering through a kitchen window and laughing hysterically. He'll get to the bottom of which researchers did this, and they will be fired from the SCP Foundation. Now watch SCP-001 Atonement Ouroboros Cycle or check out SCP-5000 Why? The Full Story Compilation.